Hello, my beautiful badgers. Messy Coda back again with another live dev interview. I was joined on my virtual sofa by Code Monkey over at all the w.twitch.tv slash the messy coda. You cannot afford to miss this interview if you want to make any computer games ever in your life. That's right, I've said it. You need to watch this. Sit back, enjoy, and I'll see you all in a moment. Everybody's sitting at home in front of your Amazon mirrors, your Google Watches, your Alexa PCs, and your microwave computers. Give a warm and messy welcome to the Unity Code Monkey himself, the master of Unity and creator of some of the most unique YouTube videos you're ever going to find. They're very special, and I'm going to also say a bit scary with the Squid Game that you've had on recently. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Welcome to the stream, buddy. All right. Hey, everyone. Thank you all so much for having me. This should be interesting. So it should thanks. be interesting. Don't worry. Yeah, this is my first time doing something like this. So let's see how it goes. Well, <laughs> you are going to sing for us. So there is that. Oh, boy. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. You've started off as uh, a game developer rather than a youtuber yep, exactly yeah for me i mean i started oh, i started developing games that was like when was that it was in 2008 that was the first time that i touched on flash and i first realized that making games was a thing that you could do specifically making games and being able to essentially make some money so by turning it into a job <laughs> so doing more than a than a hobby <laughs> Yeah, that was the the first time that I that I saw it. Pretty much, as there was uh, with flash games, you had a bunch of platforms. So there was one called Mochi Ad. So pretty much, yeah, it's kind of like the same thing as YouTube. So you just put a little five ten second ad before the game, and that's that's how you make money. Now, obviously, just like with YouTube, that really only works with the millions of plays. But I mean, for me, uh, I think for my first few games, they made like. Two dollars each, so <laughs> two dollars. Which back then, I mean, that was more than zero. Hang on, so hang on, hang on. That was good. two dollars for the lifetime of the game. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> no way. The entire the entire lifespan of the game. So how long do how long would those games take to make? Oh, those first ones they were pretty quick. I was just trying them out, but I don't know, maybe a couple of days at most, a week to make. So yeah. Those were pretty much just learning projects and making, yeah, making two dollars. I was very happy with it. <laughs> <laughs> well, they do say that you're going to learn by making games. You can't learn exactly by just yeah. sitting there watching videos and and reading books. Yeah, you definitely gotta gotta build things. So yeah, for me that was the whole time that I was with Flash. I made flash games for about five years so i made some like 40 games wow and doing all of that really taught me a ton about about everything really everything related to game development programming how to do animation game design all those things so pretty much that's that's my usually when people ask me for advice the most generic but also most valuable advice that i can give is really just experience just to build tons and tons of things constantly non-stop and everything that you build always gives you some experience, so everything becomes much, much easier. So, yeah. That's why I love game jams. Exactly. Yeah. Game jams are a great way to force you to make something complete, make it quickly, and just get it out there, get it done, and the next one will be easier, and so on. Yeah. Well, you say the next one will be easier. I was just resizing us so I can fit us a bit better on the screen. Um, you haven't seen the games that I've, I make in a game jam, <laughs> um, they, are, they are terrible. Uh, without a shadow of a doubt, I I am awful uh, at at making things. But I'm uh, sure the last one is better than the first one. No, no, right? no. It, it, it completely opposite. <laughs> it, it, it just spirals. It gets worse and worse as you I go progress. backwards. Okay. It, 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 I am I am the antithesis of what you're you're preaching. But this is what I love about your videos because I could go to a thousand different places and see a Unity tutorial. There are there's a plethora, and it truly is, and, and and I use that word now, plethora, because there is a plethora. It's just, it's too many of the same ones that we don't really need. And then when you come to your videos, 
they really are unique you you capture topics that others aren't doing or or you're doing it in a way that um really explores items that people may be overlooked a good example is the cliched uh asset flip video that we all do okay everyone everyone does this we all make a, and i've and i've done one of those you know is, is unity good or bad and i and i went dissecting the term of asset flip um but your video and, it, and it's also short and sweet as well it's very concise you you you're very coherent at, at making an eloquent uh statement and making people understand um and you went into actually showing examples of the Sinti Studios is in particular that the same assets used in different games, the exact same assets, but creating completely different games and gameplays. And each one of those, you went into uh, uh, analyzing the, even the comments on the second. I haven't seen anyone else doing that. Where you actually analyzing are people interpreting? How do people see? A game you could because we call it an asset flip and there's that famous youtuber out there who goes and makes lots of videos about asset flips but it was very interesting your point that you made in that video where you said do the people who buy the game even exactly. acknowledge it or care about it that it's a reused asset yeah i mean that's the that's the thing for me being since i I mean, before I was, after I was with Flash and before I was uh, more on YouTube, I spent what, seven or eight years working uh, pretty much full time making indie games for Steam. So based on that, I learned a lot about how Steam works. And based on that, I learned that really players just want an interesting game. So yeah, you can look at those games as an example and really see that. I mean, as long as the game is interesting, as long as the design is interesting, and yeah, people don't care that they use Sinti assets or whatever assets, whatever they use, as long as the game itself is good, that's pretty much all that matters. I love the um, the principle of people want an interesting game. It's not an alien concept. It's not difficult to comprehend, <laughs> but we tend to forget that. We get distracted with the big and the shiny and you want to be unique and different. And it's yeah. easy to forget at the end of the day, we used to play games on our Spectrum 16Ks and our we used to play Snake on exactly. a mobile phone. <laughs> yeah, and it's still entertained. So, yeah. <laughs> um, we're just reading chat. We've got here. Um, Zach Furtrifer says, my second game jam made me $2. Took me quite a bit longer to make, though. <laughs> <laughs> Danby Cool says, maybe diverge a little bit on Godot. How, how, are, you, how are you pronouncing it? Godot? Godot? Um... I don't know. I've heard everyone say every every which way. So yeah, um, I don't know if there's an official channel or something. Are you me, are you, I've always called go it Godot. Oh, Godot. There you Godot. go. I like, I like it. Godot sounds <laughs> sounds a lot better than Godot. Um, have you played with it though? No, no, I haven't really tried. I would like to we don't just make to mistakes. see what they do we differently from accidents. Unity. So yeah, I would definitely would like to try it but as with so many things the problem is always time finding the time to do all those things yeah that's the that's always the tricky part you haven't made the time machine yet no not yet <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much desert tiger for the sub three months you beautiful badger um bardic he says i learn by sitting here watching code monkey videos i think that's how most of us are, are, are learning at the moment who did you go to who was your go-to video creator when you were learning oh for me there were no videos <laughs> back when i started with unity that was in 2012 i don't think even brackies was around back then i don't know but yeah i remember that working on my first steam game obviously i had tons of questions like how how does unity work and yeah i really didn't use videos at all because they did not exist so just going to google find a bunch of things on Unity Answers, I think, already existed back then. Then a bunch of things on Stack Overflow and learning how to how to search for things without being specifically related to Unity. That's interesting because that's kind of one thing that you take for granted nowadays. You can just go into the search bar, type Unity, then whatever you want to yes, know, exactly. and you will find something specifically for Unity. But back then it was like, okay, how do I handle enemy AI logic? Then finding some post written in python or something and then trying to rework that oh, into wow. c sharp something like that yeah that's the thing so in terms of education yeah things have improved significantly in the past few years yeah it's been awesome now controversial question were you a J javascript 
Unity developer or a C sharp <laughs> Unity developer from the beginning? C sharp, yeah. JavaScript, not my thing, no. Because <laughs> um, there was Unity script. Yeah, that was pretty much the same thing. Yeah, it was a, uh, it was, I don't know, an offshoot, a version of Java. Yeah, but for me, I, I, well, I was previously making Flash games, and Flash had ActionScript 3.0, which was an object-oriented language. So actually, the transition from that one to C Sharp was pretty easy. They were all, they are very similar languages. So yeah, for me, that that obviously just became the obvious choice, going to C Sharp, which was a much more widely used language rather than Unity Script, which is specifically for Unity. So yeah, that to me was a very easy choice, choosing which one to go with. I always used to end up, all my queries were C Sharp uh, queries in Stack Overflow. And I kept on forgetting that I could Google. I was the opposite, that you could try to search for Unity. It didn't even dawn on me to look <laughs> for Unity related help everything I was looking for was was a C-sharp related query in right. Stack Overflow. And that and that's a lot of people forget that nowadays when they're searching, you don't, if you just put normal C-sharp in your game, it will work. It, it, isn't, yeah. it isn't magic yeah. Unity specific only. Don't worry about it. <laughs> exactly. <yeah. laughs> um, Danby Cool says, GD Quest has good Godot, I'm going to call it Godot tutorials, uh, but they are not as good as Code Monkey Tools for Unity. Ah, oh, <laughs> damn you, cool, so sweet. Um, Dutch style Van Godot. There you go. Or <laughs> Brigitte Bardot. Yeah, could, could be like that. Yeah. Or Gal Godot. Wonder Woman. <laughs> sure, yeah, similar. Oh, she should sponsor. She, they should get pay her to sponsor. <laughs> sponsoring <laughs> that would be good are you doing any of those uh sponsored stuff to, to now that you're you know of one of the big i'm gonna say you're one of the big huge you need to youtube is now you've broken past the 300k yeah it's been quite a lot i'm glad i'm glad people like the videos so yeah it's been great to watch that climb it's definitely been very difficult but yeah this past few this past year really things uh Really going well, so yeah. Actually, they're about like to get the videos, even better, yeah. aren't they? Give me an exclamation mark awards in chat, because. Oh right, yeah, you that, are. That was nice. <laughs> you are the Unity nominee. Yeah, that was quite the honor. Yeah. Well, it's well deserved. I, we, I was. I had a bit of a rant in my Discord about the awards that they've obviously got spaces for eight, um, but when it came to streamers, they only put six. And I know, well, not referring to myself, because I, I'm in no way a Unity <laughs> dev streamer anymore, but there's a lot of dev streamers over there on Twitch who people don't even know about that, that problem, but they've got amazing content. Uh, and it was very easy for Unity to fill out the extra two seats. Um, and, but when it came to the YouTube ones, there was no doubt when I looked down and I saw your beautiful face down there, uh, the code monkey section i was like this is this is a well deserved hang on <laughs> scroll down keep on scrolling keep on scrolling keep <laughs> they put you quite far low down to be honest keep on scrolling <laughs> my fingers hurting a little bit going down keep on going oh more mountains keep on going down keep past past these ones keep going down and uh we've got here best unity inside entertainment value i would actually push to put you on this one right Going down here, and there you are, best insider tutorial creator. So we've got, um, see, they filled out the six here. In other ones, they've only caught like four. Um, I heart game dev, Pablo makes game dev guide, Lottie makes stuff, and Thomas Bush. Now, and in there, obviously, the one that people need to vote for. We don't make mistakes. Right now, we have happy Code accidents. <laughs> right. Code Monkey got animation rigging in my jam game. Yo. <laughs> Really awesome. Yeah, that was that's a very, very powerful package and it's actually not that difficult to use. When I first when I first started researching it, I was expecting it to be insanely difficult, but actually with all of the guides, how to easily make the constraints, yeah, it's actually surprisingly easy and insanely powerful. That is I'm very happy that I took the time to learn that because yeah, it's helped me quite a lot. Yeah. Gilda says code monkey. It feels like you make more content directed towards intermediate or slightly more advanced beginners. 
than many other big YouTubers. I love that big YouTubers. Is that intentional? I like it because a lot of Unity content is directed towards complete beginners. Well, it's well, it's kind of exactly what you said. A lot of the content is directed towards complete beginners. So I don't think there's much value in me making yet another platform tutorial. So <laughs> that's kind of the thing. So for me, that's pretty much it. I mean, if you want to learn how to make a basic 2D character jump, you can find a million tutorials on that. Whereas on something like animation rigging, it's a really interesting thing. It's really uh, extremely useful for many game developers, and yet there's not many videos on it. So yeah, I think that's that's pretty much how I think. I try whatever game, whatever video ideas I have, I try to make sure that they are interesting and not really uh, not something that's overly. Uh, I don't know, already done too much, pretty much. Yeah, it's not oversaturated. But, yeah, pretty much, exactly, oversaturated, yeah. Bardaki says, the animation rigging saved my butt for that exact use case that you showed. Now it's just a slog to do that for every weapon, so true. Uh, Denvi yeah, says, show, monkey, <laughs> show Code Monkey how easy it is to make characters move around using Game Creator, teach him something new. Actually, you know what? There is about 10 million assets that I've got from all these one and talking about people who have come in for these awards um i've i don't want to take have my my rant against the unity awards system in any way against anyone who's nominated because i know 90 percent of these people have been nominated and i love every single one of them and i think they do amazing content they and they are truly well deserved deserved nominees i just think there could be more nominees for some of these categories um, and some of the games um like most anticipated Valheim that, that maybe last yeah, year. Yeah, <laughs> I did have that exact same reaction when I saw it. <laughs> so yeah, um, I, I mean it's an some, excellent game. I like it definitely here. deserves to win some award. Townscraper. Just anticipated. <laughs> have you? Let me let me put the, the on the on the picture. Have you seen Townscraper? I was watching his his dev blocks as he was making it, especially on Twitter. It is incredible, right? Townscraper. If we, yeah. It, and some of these things that you might not have otherwise seen really deserve to get a, a shout out and for people to, to know about them. Some of them, though, just feel like it was somebody at Unity was, which was like, oh, I need to fill out some people in a, um, who I can't think of anyone. Oh, what about that one? Yeah, that would do. I, I'm just, just going to put it out there. That, that's what it feels like on some of them. Um, if we go down here. To, to assets there we go valheim oh my word is it it's, it's already out come on it's already out um if we go scroll down to here best development tool carlos wilkes amazing asset publisher came on the stream last year flow is, a, is, a, is up for an award um grab it we haven't had jungle on but we've had blink the rpg builder and mega flyers uh, Chris West we haven't had on but everyone talks about how amazing this is and I'm actually going to be doing a video about the mobile traffic system from Glay coming up soon um, now you've used because you do videos on reviewing assets as well Mr. Monkey um, yeah, I've done a few which is your favorite so far and I know you're a big fan of oh. feel I'm gonna find yeah. that <laughs> that's what I was gonna say yeah out of out of those yeah feel is definitely I mean, it's really awesome because really polish is really the thing that separates good games from great games. And that asset is specifically built to make the polishing stage as easy as possible and as effective as possible. So, yeah, that one I would definitely recommend to everyone to check it out, try it. Whenever I make my next team game, I will definitely be using feel. <laughs> That's all I can say. Yeah. Uh, if we put an exclamation mark, more mountains and chats, the link there if you want to click it. Obviously. More Mountains was yet another person we've had on the stream. Um, therefore, I personally can't say who I'm going to vote for. I, this is my problem. Because More Mountains, 3M's Creative was on just the other month. Dennis has been on a couple of times. I haven't had Crypto on, but we know Crypto. Uh, and Daniel Zeller hasn't been on because he's a little bit shy, but is has been so uh, lovely chatting to me on Discord that I feel like... He's been on the show because I've spoken, spoken to him so much and he's such a sweet person. I can't bring myself to vote for any of these. It's like here, who could I vote for between like Blink and uh, Carlos Wilkes? I, I wouldn't be able to look either of them in the face again. It, <laughs> it, 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 would, it would kill me. 
Do you yeah, feel... that's a problem with knowing all those people. <laughs> Do you feel like you, you start to, to, to gravitate towards certain publishers? And I, as I say that, not, not intentionally, since he Studios is underneath my cursor right now. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, the, uh, I do have some blank assets. They're really good. The Gravit that also looks like a really interesting tool, although I haven't tried it. Pretty much all of these look really interesting, yeah. And that comes back to the video that you made about, you know, asset flips. There's absolutely no point in, in going to the asset store if you're not going to use the asset, because that's what makes Unity so strong. Yeah. Unity's, like, let's, let's, let's be honest. The difference between Unity and Unreal is that Unity's method is I'm going to make the base engine and all of the bells and whistles I'll rely on somebody else to do. And that's what the asset's there for. Asset store fills a gap that Unity are not filling themselves. Uh, and that's why people can make a mil uh, living making and selling things on the asset store. I love what you were you, in your video though. In your video for you were so generous because you're like this as this game is treading a fine line <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean there you go you do have it's a gradient between acceptable or unacceptable but still the things that personally i think are right on that line even on those examples a lot of the players don't care they just want a fun game to play so even if i personally think that one is maybe a bit dodgy apparently the players don't care they still <laughs> like it the game so yeah <laughs> Can I, can I be really cheeky? Sure. <laughs> All right. Can I show you something? Okay. Because I'm, I'm going to look at yours in a minute, right? But I'm going to show you mine first. Are you okay with that? Okay, sure. All right. Let me, let me find, let me find it. <laughs> All right. Now, I, I want your honest opinion if this is treading a fine line or if this is an asset flip okay you re are you are you ready okay i think so right. i'm a bit concerned you should you <laughs> should be concerned you should be. oh boy okay because right? <laughs> i told you these are these too forward never too forward <laughs> the whole point of these interviews is that they're not really interviews they're just two people sometimes three sometimes four sometimes we have even more people um, having a chat and having a laugh. Hang on a second, the music's going to start blaring in. Any second. Right, let's put the music down. Hang on. Let me exit. I gotta kill. I gotta kill my save. Didn't have time to build a custom one. Um, we are going to be ho and Code Monkey. Um, I am hosting my own awards. It's, it's the messy wow. awards. They were supposed to be done last year, but uh, with COVID and everything, they kind of got distracted. Um, so the messy awards are coming. It's kind of like um, the unofficial um, alternative to the Oscars, if, we, if we're going to look at it that way. Wow, so that's uh, very prestigious. <laughs> it is. Now, um, people nominate in the messy awards. So rather than me just randomly choosing someone, it's the masses that nominate the candidates who would be the nominees, actually. People nominate the nominees. Well, it's, it's an odd alien concept to nominate the nominees, but there you go. <laughs> uh, that's how the messy awards work. So if anyone would like to nominate the super alternative, yes. If anyone now would like to nominate Mr. Code Monkey himself for a messy award, please do an exclamation mark Code Monkey in chat right now. <laughs> Uh, okay. I haven't said what the award is going to be. Yeah, what do I win? <laughs> what? <laughs> I can't tell you what it's going to be because that would be wrong. Uh, hang on, let me share my screen with you. Let me share my screen. Put, put one. Now, if you see anything uh, inappropriate, okay. Oh, hang on, I've got to get off the big one because I'm sharing my screen with you, but then everyone can see it. I just realized that. Hang on, let's go to the gaming window. That's really inappropriate, isn't it? Hang on. Now I've got Inception. Can you see my screen now? Yeah, I you think you so. Should, you should be getting an Inception kind of. Yeah, vibe. exactly. Okay, good. All right, there it is. Let me. 
Hang on, what, what are chat saying? Cat, chat are spamming, literally spamming the code monkey. I didn't put a thing in to stop it. I nominate for every award. Cascade. <laughs> Cascade is on it. Why have you got Cas Cascade being advertised? Since you've gathered all the acid addi addicts, it will be fair. That is so true. Okay, random mm -hmm. game. Now, I want you to tell me, at what point does this stop becoming an asset flip? Now, this UI here are images, artwork taken from um, the... Uh, chat, you know what asset this is better than I do. Which, which asset is this, chat? Come on, chat. You know which one. You know which asset this is. Let me load, let me just load out on my other screen so I've got it. Um, asset store. What's the name of that? It's that. Come on, Yolan. You know, cute gooey. Yeah, but who's the, who's the um who's the person who makes the cute gooey? Who's the person who makes it? Not not recently. It's the other one. Um. Oh, come on, chat, you know. Anyway, chat will find out. Yolen's got, everyone's got the same kit, right? Because it, it, it was in a humble bundle, I think. Um, right, so this is, this Yui. Made by Rissimi? No, it's not Rissimi, it's the other one. Ponet, not Ponetti, it's the one who did the, um, the sci-fi one. By Candles? Layer Lab, that's it, Layer Lab. So it's the Layer Lab one. This is the layer. It was in a it was in a humble bundle. Okay. Now, is this an asset fit because I'm using the GUI? No, of course not. <laughs> That's the whole point with buying a, a GUI pack is to have buttons that look really nice. Um, let me post in. I'm gonna post this in chat without my affiliate link. That's how generous I am. Um, oh, the robot managed to fix it for me. Thank you, chatbot. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna put the name in Messi Loves Code Monkey. You've got a space in your name. Okay, mm. that's my name. That's my save. So at this point, it's not an asset. Flip. No, the music. It's the menu. Okay, this the code of the of the music of the sound thing I made. Therefore, it's not an asset flip. But the music is taken from the asset store. Asset sure. flip or not? No, I mean, that's just music, so no. Okay, this image here <laughs> is the graphics from that uh, that GUI, and I stuck in the picture of a car from a different asset, <laughs> right? and I superimposed the chick from a different asset on there. Wow. <laughs> okay, is this an asset flip? Yeah. No, I would say this is some very original art. <laughs> okay. These chickens and, and these animals are other assets from the asset store. Right. S still not an asset flip? Nope, still looking good. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to do a time trial because the time attack one is just too stressful for me. Um, let's put it on a two minute. Du -du 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 -du. Okay, you haven't done a UI for your volume setting yet. You get points taken down. Okay, so uh, cars are taken from the um, Six Studios tune pack. The scene is the entire demo scene taken from Toon City, exclamation mark Toon City in chat. Okay, now the only thing I would change would be that leaderboard right there. Seeing six games, yeah, I would, <laughs> I would replace that with a proper image. <laughs> well, the thing is, I left that in intentionally to help advertise the, the asset creators. Oh, okay. So it makes sense. All right. All right. <laughs> Toon, not Tune City, Yolan. Tune, as in cartoon. You know how to spell it. Don't mock me. <laughs> um, all right. Hang on. Let me. Has, has the, let me, the. It's got the car sound effects. Put that down. Here we go. Um, is that not work? Do exclamation mark six games, Spider Key. The animals. Are all taken from. Wait, the point is to run over the animals? No, is it... I'm making oh, this game avoid. for my kids. I'm making this game for oh, my God. children. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Sorry, it's a... what are you no, doing, Portugal? A bit too... <laughs> I know, it. I know you guys are a little bit different over there, but come on, seriously. I mean, it seemed like they had targets on them. <laughs> 
Oh my word. So all of these oh, animals man. are taken <laughs> right. from dogsers, uh, otherwise, um, what's his, um, what's his asset store name? Yolan, put a link in chat for these animals, the animal friends. So, the fact that I've taken the entire demo map, slightly tweaked it by removing some buildings, right. is it, is it still not an asset flip? using the demo map directly i yes. would say that's the one that's on the on the edge but yeah everything else looks like it fits Messi did you make the God. logic for the for the game yeah yeah all the all the all the game logics bespoke well then there you go so the fact that the so if i'd used an asset kit though to have made the logic of the game how do you, how do you feel about that? Oh, it depends on what you uh, depends on how you use it. That's pretty much it. I if love you it. found if you found a, an asset that was literally this game, literally drive around the city and stop to pick up animals or whatever, and you just took that and just dumped that on Steam, that would be my definition of an asset flip. But awesome. if you made the game yourself using assets, then you're using the correct usage of assets. That's exactly what they're for. Well, everyone, everyone at home has heard it. Okay, Chicky Taxi is not an asset flip. You can stop spamming that in chat now. <laughs> you can stop messaging me. You can stop turning up outside my house and telling me that I'm asset flipping this demo set. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I just played one of the Unity Award nominated games. I know. I now know is heavily leaning on this UI. I never saw it as an asset flip. When DNT is using this UI? Really? Ah. A lot of people are leaving heavily on this UI. Um, it's one of the most popular ones. I mean, is it an asset? The, it it perfectly matches the what you expect for mobile games pretty much it's got that really cute really nice art sound so exactly yeah if you're making games for that audience and yeah this is an excellent ui um is it an asset flip if i flip an image horizontally uh, it could well be <laughs> it could well be uh, okay so they so they, this is i'm not gonna earn any money on this unfortunately i haven't delivered anyone it's a bad representation demo of Chicky Taxi to the legend that is Code Monkey. But I have done one thing. I've shown Code Monkey uh, the working progress of Chicky Taxi, which uh, is you know pretty pretty incredible. I've got to say, made me made me feel great knowing that uh, it's got the official uh, stamp of approval that it is not <laughs> an asset flip. Right. <laughs> But that's the point, is that those these are a collection. I've used about six different assets from the asset store. Yeah. Putting them together has made something that is completely different than what somebody else could be using those same uh, unrelated assets. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's, that's the whole point of assets. You buy a bunch of assets to bring your game idea, your vision to life. That's the whole point. That's what they're used for. And... Um, but the, the other video that uh, I saw recently was, you know, and actually it's very uh, important when, when somebody wants to make a game is how to get that game out there and how to market that game. Yeah. Not everyone can go down the, the process that you're doing, though, because cause your method is genius. I have to say it is um, to become a superstar YouTuber <laughs> and then everyone will then go and play your games. But you, you said in your video that actually, it turns out that the people who watch your videos aren't necessarily yeah. the market <laughs> of who would go and play your games. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I learned that the hard way <laughs> after I was making a bunch of videos. Yeah, that uh, apparently people... I mean, it makes sense because for me, I do find that I'm way too busy learning about game development, doing various games, various games, various things that I have much less time to play games than before I was doing this. So, yeah, it makes sense that an audience of game developers would not necessarily be an audience <laughs> of game players. <laughs> As Will Spoon says, game devs a little bit too busy deving to play. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, yeah that yeah, seems to be the case, yeah. You need to play games, though. 
to be able yeah, to be absolutely. able to know what to make you got to you got to see your competitors yeah definitely i mean for me i might not spend too much time playing games but i definitely spend a lot of time watching games so pretty much if you tell me a name of any game chances are that i've seen it played i've probably not played it but i've pr i probably know enough about the game to know what it's like so that's kind of how i keep up to date with the things i'm constantly going through all the games checking out all the trailers all the things and with that i can stay pretty informed doing how things go yeah and you're killing two birds with one stone because you're also making that as content for your youtube videos because you've got yeah, exactly. your youtube videos talking about new games that are just coming out on steam yep yeah i do that once a month so pretty much go through the entire steam new releases and that's personally for me that's that's really useful i go through I don't know, maybe about 300 or 500 games every month, constantly checking a whole bunch of them. You're not buying them all, are you? That's a fortune. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I said I, I don't really spend the time to play them, but I spend the time to go check the store page, check the reviews, check out all the, the trailer, the description, see how they look and everything. So, yeah, I don't. Yeah, I, if I were to <laughs> spend money on all of those, yeah, that would be <laughs> quite expensive. Yeah. But, you, but you're not married and you don't have kids. Is that right? Right. Yeah, that's my that's my superpower. <laughs> He's gonna say, wait, wait until that happens, and you'll find <laughs> you're spending all of your money on diapers and baby food and lawyers. Um, then, 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 then you will have to be buying games. Um, talking about games at the moment, um, your your name for your studio, Endless Loop. Uh, I love it, by the way. I'm trying to load up um, Battle Royale tycoon to show people and bardaki says i do highly appreciate the code monkey content on highlighting the importance of marketing it was a bit of a wake-up call yep and that's the important yeah, it's definitely one, one of the most it's yeah, possibly the most important thing to actually find success because if you make a great game but nobody knows about it well then it's not really going to do very well the whole idea about a good game sells itself that doesn't really doesn't really happen so yeah you've got to focus and i know some people hate hearing that and personally <laughs> i do too in <laughs> marketing is not really a, a fun thing to do but the alternative is if you don't do it then you don't sell any copies and you can't keep making games so <laughs> that's pretty much how i look at it it's a um the the roi is, is a, a very important word that people need to learn the return of your investment yeah. how much time is it going to take you to make your game how much, how much money do you need to be able to make back your time? Because people go, it really didn't cost me any money to make the game. I coded it myself. Oh, I did all the artwork yeah. myself. Yeah, but how much time did you spend doing that that you could have spent doing something yeah, exactly. else? That's how much it cost you. How much is your time worth? Um, and then you need to work out how much time will it take you to make the next game and how much will it cost you to make the next game and how much will it cost you to live until your next game starts earning money? exactly yeah for me it's funny that you mention ROI because yeah that's exactly <laughs> that's exactly what i did with my youtube channel i knew that growing a youtube channel was going to take a very long time it was going to be very difficult so yeah i was hyper focused on knowing that yeah just because all i'm spending is time because obviously i don't i don't really have to spend any money i mean i already got unity so i don't need to spend any money to make the videos i just need my time i just need to be able to learn things able to teach them record edit and so on so all it takes is my time but yeah since the beginning obviously i was very hyper aware that if i'm spending the time making these videos that means that i'm not spending that time making games which i could then sell so i was always very focused on the fact that this uh experiment with making the youtube channel this was not a free experiment so i had to be very Let's say careful, very planned about how do I plan things so that eventually in the future, hopefully, there's an ROI based on this project. It's awesome that you're saying that because a lot of people will think, oh, we just do it as a as a hobby in the background. But actually, you're going to do it. It's a full time. It's your job. Yeah, exactly. Now, can I be very cheeky? I'm going to load up <laughs> your sure. your battle royale psycho. Can okay. I be super cheeky and ask? The important question that everyone always wants to know. How much money do you actually make? 
setting. Uh, they actually made a, a video on, on... I don't remember when I made it. Was it six months after lunch? See if I pick up the video. But yeah, I made a, I made a. Uh, let me post the link in chat. Made the video and it took. Uh, it actually did relatively well for for this one. I mean, it took me. I think in total was about 18 months to make. So yeah, even back then when I made the video, yeah, because I showed the numbers right in the beginning. Yeah, there you go. So after that, the total for this was. Yeah, this was on the first month of the release. So the total back then was 120,000. That's gross. That is not net. That's obviously a huge difference right there. So, <laughs> well, what, yeah. <laughs> what, what is the difference like, for people who don't really understand setting net agents? On gross, that's how much people pay. So the game costs $10, roughly $10, with the uh, differences in region and so on. So when someone pays $10, that's $10 gross. But that ten dollars does not go into your pocket as the developer or the company or whatever that is. So pretty much from that, you got to take away first of all the Steam's uh, normal taxes, the consumer taxes. Then you got to take away chargebacks. You got to take away refunds. Then after all of that, you take away Steam's cut. And then after Steam's cut, that's essentially income. So then, depending on your uh, <clears throat> depending on your country or your legal situation then you've got to pay income taxes or company taxes or so on so yeah so basically gross and net are extremely different just based on the net values you can't really tell whether something was very successful or not yeah so out of that let's say 100 let's say 120 grand uh were you taking yeah, for that i think was about uh maybe fifty thousand in euros maybe well i'm glad you're like gonna that. i'm glad you say more than 20 grand because I would have cried. Oh yeah. <laughs> after all of that, but uh, that's that's nothing to be sneezed at. Yeah, that was that was a, a decent amount. I mean, it was for 18 months of work, and that was on the on the first month. So since then, obviously, that's the big benefit of Steam is that when you make a game, the game lives forever. So yeah, even even nowadays, every month, I still sell a bunch of copies. I've got eight games on Steam, so. Every month they continue selling a little bit, and yeah, it's always a nice thing. But how? I mean, let me click on the on the play button as, as I as I start chatting to you. Um, I love I love your art style as well, dude. <laughs> um, how did you? Because you say in your video about marketing that, uh, and you were looking at the analytics of a lot of games on Steam, that they don't get that word of mouth beforehand and then people don't really buy it you, you see that it looks like a great game but there's not that many sales for you yours was very successful straight off the bat with those numbers well, it was because i focused on all those things i didn't just launch the game and that's it no i had the the uh public page gathering wish list for about i don't even know eight months maybe something like that so pretty much as soon as i had something to show I made the the uh, Steam page public to start gathering some wish lists. So by the time I launched, I had maybe 6,000 or something like that. Then I went into early access. Then in early access, I was constantly doing updates. So yeah, constantly trying to make as much noise as possible and constantly trying to gather an audience. That was pretty much it, yeah. But if you don't do any of that, if you just launch a game on Steam, then yeah, nobody knows about it, nobody won't buy it. And, and I love that you you took you what twelve? Did you say twelve or eighteen months to make this? In total, was eighteen months. Yeah. So you had ten months of making it, and then you started making the wish list page. About there thereabouts. No, I made the. I think it was, I don't know, maybe four months or three. Yeah, something like three or four months after I started working on it. That's when I had enough art be able to make a quick trailer, a bunch of screenshots, and make the store page public together wish list. So that was about three to four months, I think, when that was public. Then the game came out, let's say, like six or eight months after that, something like that. It was in early access for like 10 months, something like that, yeah. Wow, so if, uh, I, I didn't realize that about that much time of building up the hype. I thought it'd be like one or two months uh, you've got to be in and out quick, but it's actually the longer the better. 
But is there a yeah? I point? mean, wish lists don't really go down. So the longer, the more time you have, the more wish lists you're going to get. Just it's pretty much based on time. If you get ten wish lists per day, if you if you're there just for a month, you get a certain amount. But if you're there for ten months and you're still making ten wish lists a day, yeah, that adds up. Is it? Would you say um, you shouldn't do too many at once, or should you cast your net wide? What do you mean? Do too many of what? Get like concurrent projects, games, and wish lists. Oh, uh, that's actually an interesting one. There is a strategy I think some people have tried, which pretty much you just make a bunch of prototypes, put them all up as public pages together, wish lists, and then pretty much just dedicate yourself full time to the one that is actually uh, getting the most natural wish lists. Ah. I've heard some people did that experiment, but I'm not sure what came out of it. But yeah. That's actually quite, you know, it's, it's a very too small. Make it bigger then. Make it, what, okay, I made a good size. Please follow the assistant. Oh, okay, I'm ignoring the assistant. Um, that's actually a really interesting uh, way of doing it because a lot of businesses do that. It's, it's like A-B testing, but on the extreme, isn't it? So it's, it's getting that market uh, test. Like when they're, they're making the movie and they get everyone in the cinema to sit down and watch the ending to say, which ending do you like? Okay. Um, it does cost ten dollars uh, to get on on Steam, but does it actually cost you for the early access, or is it just the ten dollars to get onto the onto the Steam? Oh, it's page? just it's the price to on. get a to get a Steam app ID. That's pretty much it. Doesn't matter if it's early access or full release. Yeah. And you once and then your game those a hundred dollars, those do get recouped when you finally exactly. get sales. So it's not like as soon as your game's live, you get the hundred dollars back. It's once your game has earned a hundred dollars worth of sales. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hopefully, you should be able to earn more than a hundred dollars. You, you're being very generous to what Chicky Taxi's <laughs> possible income is going to be. Um, if I get a hundred dollars of sales of Chicky Taxi, I'm putting that down as a success. <laughs> I have to tell you that right now. Um, I'm I'm, I'm going to get distracted if I sit here playing um, playing this. Although I'm immediately stuck and click on the highlighted position. To yeah, I think <laughs> I don't know how, but I think you somehow found the bug in the first few seconds. So I told you I was going to find the bug, <laughs> and I immediately it found. It seems that you cancelled out of construction when you shouldn't have been able to. But maybe you can if you go and uh, start <laughs> construction again. Oh god. <laughs> so if you go onto the button to start placing the shooting range again. No, I'm broke look! I'm broken even more. Yeah, you were oh god. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I have no idea what you just did. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh i do apologize i do <laughs> by the way if anyone is wondering you can you can purchase the entire collection from code monkey over on steam let me find, let me find the link um as I, as I have just broken it i do i do need to help uh redeem myself somewhat uh, let me pop over to Steam Powered. I did have the link uh, previously. Talking about things that are wish list for link, uh, for link for Steam. Let me put a link. It's Rise of Piracy from my very own Irish John Games, um, who's a beautiful badger. Let's find the link for Steam Powered for. There we go. I <laughs> I'm so sorry. I didn't think I was going to break it so soon. I'm actually impressed. I mean, that wasn't supposed to happen. So. <laughs> What happens if you try to place a building? Does um, it some say that you can't do it? Let me let me try now. Uh, let me just put the link in chat for um, Tycoon. Here you go. Um, oh, that come. Why am I, Why is it not coming up on the on the what's it? endless loop? There we go. Endless loop collection found it. You've got two collections. That's why you've got the Endless Loop collection. Yeah, there's one with tycoons and one with just all of them. Yeah. And then you've got the management one. So if somebody's not wanting to spend too much money, then get the management. If somebody's going to go all in, 
and spend the fortune that is. Let me, <laughs> let me put that link. They are so cheap. This is the other thing that blows I also my have, mind. Uh, on my own website, I've got. Have you got an affiliate link? That's also part. Uh, it's not an affiliate. Just there's a bundle there that is always permanently discounted, pretty much, and it comes with comes with Steam keys for all of them. Ah. Exclamation uh, mark okay, code apparently monkey. Apparently, I chat. can't post links. Yeah. Don't worry. You just you just do exclamation mark code monkey in chat, and it would come up. All right. You're VIP'd in that you have a permanent uh, code monkey command. That's how awesome you are. So, um, it's only twelve pounds of her queen's shillings for the tycoon collection. Ninja tycoon, by the way, our tycoon. I was just playing blueprint tycoon and game corp DX. That one was actually a remake of one of my my most popular Flash game. That was fun. I made the original Game Corp. It was in Flash. It got like it was my most popular game ever. It got like six million plays. Whoa! That was quite. An, although, <laughs> how much do you think six million plays uh, pays uh, in, in ad <laughs> revenue? Um, yeah, six million plays, two hundred dollars. Thankfully, it was a bit better than that, but <laughs> it was about a thousand bucks. Okay, yeah. I was good because <laughs> I, I, I went I low. Made the, <laughs> but then I made the Steam version, and that one made like ten million dollars, like fifty k or <laughs> something like that. It was one of my most successful. So yeah, pretty much the the that's a problem with making making it ad based free games. It's extremely difficult. Whereas if you make a premium game, if you just get a couple. Thousand sales, then you're already making much more money. <laughs> I, people kept telling me, "Go make mobile games with adverts, and you'll be a millionaire." Oh God, that is insanely difficult. <laughs> Maybe you know, years ago, I I I did a um, I I used to do lectures and seminars teaching product management and project management, and after doing one of those, um, I got in, they invited me out for a meal, um, the people who were who were in the audience. Because uh, bizarrely, they wanted to keep on talking and get me drunk. Mm. And um, one of them uh, was was there and, and, and his son. And they were showing the mobile game that they had made. And it was like a, a Slender Man game. I'd never heard of Slender Man. Right. And the gimmick of the game, because that's the other thing you were talking about. You need to have a hook. Uh, and... It had a camera. If your phone's obviously got a camera, as you're playing the game and getting scared, it will take a picture of you at the jump scares and say, would you like to share this with everyone? Right. And I was like, oh, that's a sweet game. How much money did that make? Well, after we bought our first house from the sales, we started oh. <laughs> investing the money in other properties and the making is more basically the same game but just different names and i went wow <laughs> oh, your first house <laughs> yeah i mean back then if you that that's the thing about about mobile you either make zero or you make a ton yeah. that, there's no in between <laughs> and the and the best thing is cuz i cuz people are asking in chat in my discord am i too young to join the game jam i'm 13 or i'm 15 am i too young this person was about 12 or 13 when they made that game and they and they at that age was earning enough money to buy a house so mm -hmm. age is not an issue when it comes to um you putting the effort as the keyword the effort to make your game or your whatever you want to do it can be a game it could be a book it could be a movie it could be a cake Whatever you want to make, as long as you put the effort to see it through to the end, then you're going to be in with a chance of being successful. Doesn't matter, age is not an issue. Don't worry about it. Yeah, nowadays you can learn anything. So as long as you have the desire to learn, as long as you want to build something, yeah, nowadays you can definitely find out how to do it, how to find success. And yeah, there's no minimum. As long as you know how to use Google, you're old enough. <laughs> as long as you know how to use Google, you're old enough to get yep. a job anyway. <laughs> As, as the number one um, method of working in, the, in any, any industry is how to Google something before anyone realizes that you're Googling it 
that's the number one order. So what did you want me to try and build? I'm going to try to build the shooting range. Was that what you wanted me to do or build something else? Yeah, no, try to build the one from from tutorial. Just want to see if you try to build it, will the tutorial continue or not? You got to build it with a certain size. Okay. I need to put an entrance. Must be along a wall. Must be along a facing out. Must be placed along... Hang on, this one? Yeah, you need oh, to put... yeah. oh, okay. Oh, it's the actual line. Is... Oh, I get it. I'm an idiot. Sorry. Um, your, your, your game market isn't aimed at idiots. Or, or is it? Because... <laughs> <'cause... laughs> Exit. You can rotate the buildings, Come but on. oh! But as soon as you move the window, it seems like the the tutorial continued. Has it clicked? To, now you can build. The, uh, am I in the tutorial now or not? Yeah, you are. I mean, I'm watching the stream, so I'm like thirty seconds behind. But yeah, you've got the exit. You can press the R key to rotate. What did I just and put the... down? What is this thing? What did I do? What is this shooting I... range thing that I put down? That's a building where the characters will go to shoot, but No, no, the, the, can... the word. I wrote this thing that I've clicked down which had the word shooting range. Is that a window? Oh no, that's the entrance. Oh, okay. <laughs> 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 Haven't you played uh, Roller Coast Tycoon? Um... I played the original on my Amiga. Right, yeah. Well, this is very much inspired by that. But uh, you've got the assistant right there telling you click to continue. Okay, I've clicked him. Let's place the entrance. Why is it? Why is it up here? I'm waiting for the stream to what? catch up. Oh, right, because it's. <laughs> <laughs> Because the building was supposed to be placed up there. Oh boy. Oh god. I'm sorry. I mean, but you can click on the skip tutorial. No, I don't want to skip it. I want to see how far I can break it more. Well, then maybe you can place another another shooting ring oh, right yeah. there. Um, now, how do you get like when it comes to doing uh, beta testing and 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 QAing and stuff? What do you actually do? Do you do you uh, contact your community? Do you do you put a, an advert out? Well, for me, when I started, I didn't really have a community, so that wasn't really a possibility. But what I did was uh, ask a bunch of friends to try them out, to try testing. And then, of course, the game was in early access for quite a while. So that's how I did most of the testing. So through all the time in early access, through all the updates, constantly trying to fix things. What's your view on early access? When should early access finish? Uh... Well, when when you've got whatever you wanted to make when it's done. Controversial though, because some things, and I'm gonna say seven days to die, seem to be in early access for about a hundred years. I mean, if they're still adding things, then sure. I mean, stay in early access. If the people still want things, and if the developers still uh, is interested in making those things, if those things still match up with their vision of the final game, then yeah, I think that's a that's a good thing. But or does that just got the... Oh yeah, not only actually, it was the uh, No Man's Sky continues getting getting updates. So that's also a thing. They continue to want to expand upon that game. So, well, But does it have it? to be in early access to be getting updates? Because no, it doesn't have to. I think that's just a, a perception for the players. Basically, if it's an early access and an update comes out, then it can be expected that, okay, maybe there might be some issues, maybe there's still some missing features or something. Whereas if it's a finished game and you put out an update, I think at that point players expect it, okay, this update should be 100% functional, everything should be perfectly matched up with all the rest of the game. So 
Yeah, I think it's a player perception sort of thing. So it's managing expectations that, hey, if you spend yeah. your money buying my game, it's not finished, there's going to be bugs, but you're funding me to carry on making my game. Yeah, pretty we much, and watching the game develop, actually. Someone mentioned Factorio, that's funny, because I, I picked up Factorio, I, I love the game as soon as I saw it, the whole factory automation management thing, that is just the thing that I want, so yeah, I played it pretty much as soon as an early access was available, it wasn't even on Steam, and yeah, I haven't touched it since then, so I did hear that recently it came out of early access, so right now, I so I played it right as early access was beginning, now that it's out, I very much would like to go back to it and see how it changed. If it changed, uh, my wife loves those as well. Uh, you've made your own equ equivalent. Like if you put over to exclamation mark code monkey in chat and on his YouTube channel, um, people can if they are your patron, or do they download it or can everyone download? But the project files, yeah. no, anyone can download. Yeah, that's very generous. You're very generous. <laughs> I make people pay me a thousand pounds to download anything from my, from my <laughs> videos. Um, he should plug the channel. <laughs> so much my code plug. I haven't plugged the channel in in a whole five minutes. I need to plug it again. <laughs> um, to be honest, Mr. Code Monkey doesn't need any help plugging his channel because everyone knows where Mr. Code the Monkey lives because his channel is simply awesome. I'm gonna, <laughs> Thanks. You're welcome. I'm gonna say that early access at times feels like a cheat because How so? it. It's like um, it's like so inviting somebody round to play uh, in your sports team in football with you, and immediately the first thing they say to you is, "Yeah, but I'm not any good." So, well, not so really. I don't. I don't think that's. It's it's it's, I, it's managing I, I a negative expectation. But it doesn't necessarily have to be. Uh, that the game isn't any good. It can just be no, that exactly. the game doesn't have all of the features. But so that's more like depending on how the developer views early access. It, and because to me, early access is like, okay, I want the game to have 10 features, and right now the game is functional. You can play it, you can enjoy it, but it only has five features. So all the other ones will be added along early access. But that's the point. Personally, yeah, I think that's how you you're giving do You're it. giving an, uh, an immediate feeling of expectations i love it when you do that on your stream and you bang the water bottle on your head i just love that <laughs> um you're managing an expectation of straight away of, of a negative uh feeling to like this isn't gonna be a complete game therefore it's not as good but if it's an indie developer in his bedroom or a small team then it's to be expected because they need the funds to for that and they, and they need people to test it like you said that they don't have their own qa team they need people to be playing it. Yeah. Therefore, it's an ecosystem. However, it's misused. It's abused now because you see AAA studios who have the budget, who have well, the teams. I mean, that always, that always goes. I mean, you can't... <laughs> for every piece of technology, there's always going to be people who use it correctly and those who use it incorrectly. So, yeah. Do you feel like um early access has got to the point because uh, there was a time where ea became a dirty word do you do you yeah. feel like it's flipped now back again we've gone past that period and it, and it's okay to be early access yeah i think so i mean a while ago we were talking about valheim i mean that one is still in early access and it came out last year and i greatly enjoyed it and the game sold like eight million copies and everybody loves it so yeah, but don't forget yeah, it, it is, is highly example. anticipated to yet come out because it is in the awards <laughs> for the most anticipated game yeah i wouldn't call it anticipated <laughs> i would say if you want it you can play it right now and it's already an awesome game and over time it's going to get better so that is an excellent example of how to do early access right start with a base that is already already works is already very fun and put out a roadmap saying how this is going to get even better with even more things and so on do you think it's important to be transparent in that regard? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Definitely have some sort of roadmap. So you tell the people, OK, this is what it looks like now. And this is what my vision is for the final game. Yeah, that should definitely be very clear. How far ahead would you plan? Because we've seen there's a couple of very famous use cases of assets. We're not going to mention their names because um, 
controversial, hashtag controversial, but when releasing a roadmap and people purchasing based on the vision of what it's to be, and if they see it's taking too long to fulfill those milestones that you've got in your roadmap, then actually the mob can turn against you. Yeah, of course. I mean, it's always about managing expectations. That's why one of the one of the questions that Steam forces you to answer is how long will this be on early access? So you you as a developer need to think, okay, how long is this going to be and come up with some text to write there and then it's up to the player to read that and see, okay, am I willing to am I interested in the game as it is right now and am I willing to wait this long until the final vision comes out? So again, as long as everyone is transparent and honest, yeah, I think the system itself can work very well. Wow, the um They've, they've got a how long will it be in earlier? They go, I'm, I would answer that with how long is a piece of string? <laughs> that would be, <laughs> be my answer to when I put Chicky Taxi. Early access, Chicky Taxi, on, coming to soon on Steam. Uh, Warspawn says roadmaps can be tricky though if you have to pivot and change the road. Exactly. Um, and that's my yeah. concern about being too, having your roadmap showing too much in the future because, you know, the future's blurry. It's a murky, muddy. Water. I mean, of course, it's uh, at the end of the day, it's just a best guess from the developer. So even with the best intentions, yeah, it can go wrong. But yeah, that's. I mean, that's the risk of the of the platform of early access. I mean, if you if you really don't know or don't want to risk that, then really the only uh, the only option is the other one, which is just make a full release and launch it when. The whole roadmap is already done. So those are your two options. Now, you're young enough to remember when you used to buy a, a computer magazine. And the only time that you got to see what a game was going to be like was get, but getting the cassettes or the, the, the discs on the front of magazines before before the Internet. Um, that we, we they used to call them demos and rolling demos. Do you remember rolling demos, which were just like a, a, a video effectively? of gameplay, of what to expect. You, they didn't even give yeah, you playable were, uh, demos. A handful of magazines, yeah. I didn't actually have that many because they were pretty expensive over here, but yeah, I did have a few with some cinematics and things. Um, are we getting Are we getting raided? Are we raid? I didn't, I didn't hear any noises. Have we just been All raided? Right. We, <laughs> if, we, if we have been raided, thank you so much for the raid. Um, All right, hey, repel the people. borders. There we go. Who have we been raided by? <laughs> have we, who, who have we been raided by, chat? Who's just raided us? Because we couldn't hear who has just raided us. Um, does it ever give us a, a replay of the alert? Um, <laughs> is it Irish John? It's Irish John uh, Games. Yeah. Give me an ex We were just talking about his amazing game that's being wishlisted at this point on Steam, uh, and we can ask him. Oh, how is it long? the Rise of Piracy? It is the Rise of Piracy. Uh, and it's also the one that I was saying should be in uh, the Unity Awards for, for most anticipated. If not that, he should be at least mentioned as one of the best Unity developer streamers that you can see on Twitch. So give me an exclamation mark. SO shout out for at Irish John Games. He's a beautiful badger. And uh, Rise of Pirates. Do you like Mountain Blade? Come on. Oh, very nice. I love it. Yeah. Right. Could you, would you like to play Mountain Blade on ships as pirates? That does sound very interesting. Yeah. That's pretty much like Rise of Piracy. <laughs> Cause, um, I do have a question though. If the game is coming out in June, why is there no video trailer on the Steam page? Oh, that's a great that's... question. Oh boy. <laughs> Cause it's not like he doesn't have the content because he streams it. Frequently. Yeah, the I mean the the screenshots look really great. I just like to see it in action. Yeah, Irish. Why have you not got any videos up? Is this a scam? Are you scamming us the whole time? Is <laughs> have you been showing us somebody else's game that you've been pretending to develop, putting you on the spot, John? Exactly. Now, do you want to hear a funny story, Code Monkey? All right, go for it. When you're developing your games. Do you plan out the uh, technology stack that you're going to use for your game? Uh, sure, yeah. Whatever is crucial to making the game work, yeah, that's pretty much the first thing that I get done on the prototyping stage. Yeah. Awesome. So like, if you were going to make a multiplayer game, you'd think 
uh, what kind of multiplayer networking framework am I going to use? Yeah, of course, that would be the number one thing. Yeah. Yeah. You wouldn't like uh, make your game, and after you've made your game, decide. You know what? I'm going to change the entire networking uh, framework for a different one. And and yeah, that having... would not be a good, <laughs> a good thing. No. And and if you did it once, you definitely wouldn't do it again, would you? No, definitely not. <laughs> no. Yeah, you you it would be that would just be madness, wouldn't it? You wouldn't <laughs> you wouldn't start on Unit, and then go. I'm going to move over to to Photon, and then oh boy. <laughs> and then go. You know what? I'm going to move to Mirror. That wouldn't happen. You wouldn't. You would you would you recommend that? No, I would not. <laughs> would you be surprised or shocked if I told you that? <laughs> and wait, not only is Irish John one of the most amazing streamers, he's also one of the most courageous game developers because when he saw that unit obviously was um, dying yeah. a, a painful death in, in the teams uh, and what that was going on, moved over to, to Pun found that Pun, after he'd already done all the development for his game, had technical limitations. He started again moving over to Mirror. So he's actually in oh, his boy. third iteration. Yeah, that's <laughs> not very helpful, I would say. <laughs> but it's amazing because he's still on track to get his game out in June 2022. I mean, yeah. Congrats to you for, for sticking to it, because that was certainly, I'm sure that was a very difficult process going through all of that. And I like to point out, all of that process, you can watch in his VODs over on his Twitch streams <laughs> and see that journey. Yeah, Code Monkey, he still wasn't nominated for a Unity Award. It's disgraceful, I have to say. <laughs> I have to say. He, he should have been given an award as the person most likely to try a new network engine, at least. <laughs> That's a good award. <laughs> it's very, he's going to get that in the Messi. He's going to get nominated <laughs> for the Messi award. I almost didn't bother. And that's, and that's the other thing, that sometimes game development, when you hit a wall or you start having a problem, it can really be demotivated. How, can you, how do you keep yourself motivated in your projects? It's by knowing exactly what you... By working from a plan, by knowing what it is that you have to do in order to make your final vision come to life. That to me, that that's the most important thing. So I never, whenever I make a game, I'm never just making it as I go. No, I always have a design planned out. So I always know, not 100%, but roughly, okay, these are the features that I need for the final game. So yeah, whenever I, I run into something that is really difficult that I have no idea how to solve, I just move on to another task and then later on come back to that and so on. I... So yeah, having having a specific plan, knowing what's still missing, what's left to do, that is definitely essential. So you, you've got this, um, you've got the big picture laid out of where you want yeah. to go. The, the journey, the destination is there. It's, it's written on the map. The journey yeah. getting there, sometimes you might find a roadblock in the way and you're going to need to take a detour. Sure, yeah, exactly. But ultimately, your destination is still planned out. Yep. And I think the, the, the cool thing, what you're saying is like, if you, if you find yourself getting stuck, just taking a break and working on something else. It's like uh, letting your brain have a holiday, I suppose. Yeah, exactly. I mean, whenever you get frustrated with something, definitely take a break, either work on another task or really just a, a complete break, really go somewhere. For me, I've got, <laughs> I've got dogs. So whenever I get stuck, just go for a walk. When I come back 20 minutes later, most of the times the answer just comes to me. <laughs> so that to me is one of the best ways to solve complex problems. You do have a beautiful dog. Uh, the one that I saw the other day on your video was stunning. Yeah. Um, can we? I know I, I don't want to keep you too long because I know it's, it's going to, coming up to your bedtime. You you are a full time developer, so you do need your beauty sleep. But I really want to. <laughs> I, I I want you to share because I said it at the start of the stream in the introduction. You are uh, the most peculiar of of YouTube Unity developers because you do things that other people wouldn't have the guts to do. One of which is make a squid game game <laughs> yep are we, are we able to share your screen and, and use it to, to show us a, a little bit of your squid sure. game game now the thing if nobody's watched squid game <laughs> it's not it, it's something that a lot of people have been like this would make a really great game yes when you are family 
uh, you, you know, orientated YouTuber. And there's, you know, there's a lot of people who watch our videos who are of the younger persuasion. Uh, making a game about the, ki <laughs> the, the, the killing that goes on <laughs> in Squid Game. I have to say that as I was making the game, I really didn't see it that way. Honestly, only when I made the video and somebody said, boy, the game is a bit disturbing. That's only when I realized, OK, yeah, I guess the idea <laughs> is a bit on. But as I was making it, for me, it's just, a, it's just a fun game idea. There's a bunch of players trying to go somewhere. You're trying to stop them. Yeah, I guess it, it's a fun thing because it really depends on your perspective how you look at things it's a it's a fun it's a fun family friendly game <laughs> now the thing the thing about your squid game not, when you when you watch the squid game yeah it's going to be spoilers um that you they're in a they're in a game they're these real sure. contestants and they have to survive a number of tasks and they literally are surviving as about as much as a spoiler because we need to give a spoiler to be able to see what this is now you would think, are oh, you're going to play the contestant who has to try and survive these <laughs> these games? No, Code Monkey's gone. You know what? <laughs> when I was watching Star Wars, I was always on the on the side of the stormtrooper, <laughs> that hardworking family man who was going to the Death Star and just earning his living, and in yep. the end getting blown up. Uh, spoiler hashtag: Death Stars get blown up. Um, <laughs> is that is that why you is that why you've done it as you played the guard? It's more like just a while ago we were talking about why do I make some interesting tutorials? Well, because there's already a million platformer tutorials. And same thing for this. There were already a million games where you play as the players. That's the most obvious thing. So I thought, okay, how can I bring a unique twist onto this idea? <laughs> <laughs> and it is a unique twist. I'm, I'm going to point out, uh, this was commented on your stream, that you use the light theme. My most, one of my most successful videos was how to hack Unity to make it dark theme before you <laughs> right. before you had to pay for it so you used to have to hack the uh the yeah the, you could change a, a byte yeah or something like that yeah <laughs> that, that was the, my most successful video because people were just hurting their eyes and you made a very good point when you in a well-lit room you got a well-lit yeah, exactly uh, uh you yeah, i really don't like working in the dark so for me I'm very much a day person, very much lights on, always like that. Lights on, clothes on, stream. Uh, yep. EF Dome says, I'm so glad I caught the stream. I wanted to pop in and say thank you for your courses on YouTube videos. They are super helpful and I always look forward to your content. 100% oh, that awesome. is aimed to thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that's aimed to you, <laughs> I'm going to say that. Um, <laughs> so EF, Do EF Dome, have you actually also seen... There's an exclamation mark code monkey in chat for my wish, John. Um, have you seen his Udemy courses as well? That if you're looking for a uh, more detailed uh, whole set of courses, you can go over to Udemy and also onto code monkey's website, unitycodemonkey.com and catch them. This is the squid game game. <laughs> now, Again, I'm just trying to <laughs> stop the players from from losing me the game that's all i'm doing <laughs> but depending on the interpretation yeah maybe it's a bit darker than that <laughs> now you've also it's not like you know because can you they're, they're, they're just polygon people it's the blood splatter <laughs> as i should get hit as well <laughs> I mean, the main thing is really the, the ragdolls. I think that's the most fun part about <laughs> oh yeah about this project. Watching them fly. Look at those. Those escaped. So oh, that's a cheeky ending. buggers. <laughs> you know they 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 got managed to escape there, and it's it's a nice cool twist on the um the what do they call it castle defense games. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there were a bunch of those back in the day in the flash days. Lots of them where you had some arrows to defend the castle and so on. Yeah, those were very popular. Now, are you able to actually sell this without getting sued? Uh, I don't think so. At least not with the name Squid Game. Maybe if I change the name. I mean, Danny made a very successful uh, game that is definitely based on Squid Game. So... Did you see Crab Game? No, I haven't. Really? I haven't seen. Um, I'm still up, I'm still upset with Danny for taking the name Muck after um I was I was making my asset Muck 
And now I have to come up with a new name for it because everyone refers to Muck as Danny's game Muck. So, um, <laughs> yeah, that's striking. Yeah, so it was. It was. I was like, oh, everyone's talking about Muck. They they must be loving my new asset that I'm working on. <laughs> no, no, that was a that was a heartbreaking day when I found that out. Um, is this multiplayer? Question in chat. No, this is just a a fun project that I made in I don't even know how many hours. Maybe 20 hours, 30 hours, something like that. Yeah, just a fun demo. So no, it's all just single player. There's no multiplayer anywhere. I'm loving Any it. multiplayer project in that short amount of time, that would be very, very tricky. <laughs> now, you know you need to join my next game jam then and set yourself the challenge right. of, of making multiplayer. Because let's be honest, you in a game jam, the, the stakes need to be a bit higher because... <laughs> You know, you can make some epic things. What, where, what you, what would you say is outside your comfort zone? Uh, puzzle games, maybe, because that requires a lot of puzzle design, and I am not good at puzzles. <laughs> also, like um, those, lo so logic, cha logical challenge. Uh, depends on what kind. For example, I really like the Zactronics games, so Space Cam and the TIS or I know the Zactronics games those are really awesome. They are sort of puzzles, so I kind of enjoy those, but I don't think I'd be able to make one. Ah, that's a challenge. That's something, you know, because that's the great <laughs> thing about game jams is that they challenge you to take a step outside your comfort zone. And we're all thinking the same thing, that we want to be playing this game where we are the runners and then the other players play as the, as the shooter. <laughs> sure, that would be an interesting idea although i think it would be a bit frustrating for the players i mean over <laughs> here there's one shooter having fun shooting everything and all of these players as long as he's not allowed to shoot floor, somebody so. who, who's who's not moved yeah but that's also that's already part of the rule so if i shoot just a random person then i get a negative bonus point i can technically shoot all of them so if i want i can shoot the ones that are green that are safe but if I do that, I get a penalty point because obviously I'm not supposed to do that. Yeah, but you know, you get a penalty. The other person's knocked out of the game, so there needs it needs to be an equal <laughs> equal punishment on both sides, though. Um, yeah, this would be a tricky one to make into a fair multiplayer. A fair a fair Squid Game multiplayer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess that's kind of the problem. Squid Game by itself is not really supposed to be fair. So, um, Irish John wants to point out to you though. That he made Badger Party, which was a game that, from one of my other game jams that I hosted. He made a multiplayer game in three days, and it was awesome, I have to say. Yeah, now, if you already know the tech stack, yeah, I'm sure I, I, you could <laughs> get it done relatively quickly. And I love, I love how you managed to get a dig in there at him knowing every tech stack of every <laughs> network engine out there. I mean, all the time that you spent exploring all of those things, <laughs> you'll learn a ton from that. So that's a positive. <laughs> exactly. That is a positive. Almighty Game Dev, can I get an exclamation mark shout out in chat to the Almighty Games Dev, another awesome Unity streamer over on Twitch, who's also got courses on Udemy as well. Um, if they were player controlled, it would be much harder to hit them. It is true. Um, or a lot easier because they'll just panic. Um, this is some psycho game. Have you not seen Squid Game, Iris John? <laughs> you must. What exactly? I like Code Monkey more and more. This is what I love about these <laughs> interviews and these chats because it brings people out the, their shell. You get to know the true them, what ticks in their heads. Um, you know, the fact that they just love shooting random people. And make a game <laughs> where you are the person who restocks all the resources the compound needs for Squid Game. <laughs> A squid that would be game fun. management that would be a game. Fun management game. Yeah, yeah, that would be interesting. And I mean, oh my word, Code Monkey, Squid Game Tycoon. There you go. There's your next. <laughs> there's your work. next tycoon game. <laughs> that would be interesting. Uh, all the other Squid Games I've seen a multiplayer battle royale kind of things. Yeah, this is a much nicer. This is uh, much more interesting. Uh, and, and that's and that's what we said at the start of the, of the show is that code monkey code monkey does the out of the ordinary does those things that aren't oversaturated that everyone else has done oh look some of your bullets have gone <laughs> blasting through yeah there you go <laughs> <laughs> 
What do you use for your debugging? Uh, I saw a couple of debug logs in your on your live stream that you're doing. Do you use any um, tools? Are you using Peak or anything like that? Nope, no, really. Just uh, just using debug down log. That's pretty much how I learned back when I when I started learning IRC scripting. That's how I started. Back then, the only thing you had was some logs. So yeah, that's how I learned. I got pretty good at it. So yeah. It always works for whatever I want to do. Just some basic logs, as long as I know what I'm searching for. And that works quite well. Pretty much all of my code is every t every single method has about 50 different debug logs in it. Because <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. And I'm sure if I capture enough things in a log, it will teach me. Reverse engineer what I've just coded myself. Now, we had a chat, you and I, privately. And it was very important for me because it, it basically validates me as a human being. Right. You're a sole developer, and as such, you don't really use uh, version controlling like GitHub or anything like that. Mm. Nope. I mean, that's the thing. Since I am solo, yeah, for me, it doesn't really... I mean, I do backup, so I <laughs> don't get it. But simply don't use version control. I pretty much just zip the entire project folder, and that's pretty much it. Now, everyone keeps I mean, on trying I to... don't need to work with other people. But that's yeah, that's more than enough. <laughs> they keep telling me that it's not just about being in a team. It's the common thing that keep the, the chat try to bully me into use, moving into Git or anything like that. They're saying, even if you're by yourself, you should still... Yeah, like, there's, there's Chris, it's that third trapper. Uh, I'm a solo dev, and I couldn't live without it. Sure, yeah. I mean, it's personal preference. I would never try to encourage someone who likes it to not use it. But if you don't, uh, I don't know, if it doesn't fit into your, into, your, into your way of working, then I would also say don't force yourself to use it just because you use it. Now, the um, people are talking about the compare chain. It's so much faster than zipping and unzipping. Yeah. Yeah, I agree, but that's, again, for me, I don't normally have to do it. I mean, I I do backups just because, obviously, it's always nice to have backups. But in all my time, I think I've had yeah, maybe once or twice that I've had some bugs where I had no idea what happened and I really <laughs> had to go to a previous thing. That was literally it, just about twice in the past 10 years that I had to do that. So, yeah, the issue about it being more convenient than zipping or unzipping yeah, that to me is not, hasn't been a benefit that I required, let's say. My my workflow, and I know this makes a lot of people scream, at the end of the night, I export my project as, lo as though it's an asset in, a, in, an, in an asset file. So I go file, you know, select the, the, the one, the folders from my project, and I export it timestamped. To me, that's my my version control. If I have done something throughout the day that's bad, then I should have been better at it. It's like a punishment to teach yeah. me not to do it. I mean, I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't put it that way, but, <laughs> but yeah, pretty much if you do something and you broke it, then chances are you should know how to fix it, right? I love that's that kind statement. Of thing. Exactly. <laughs> if I do something and I break it, well, then I just fix it on that same project instead of rolling back into another project. <laughs> uh, that's the real dark mode versus light mode. I know, exactly. Um, <laughs> so Almighty Game Dev says that, you know, you can identify that uh, with no use for version control, it slows the progress. I was the same way. I found that I was spending more time trying to remember um, to commit my changes. And when I would go days without committing my changes, it's like I was then having to play catch up, the commit change catch up game. Right, yeah. It's like when you haven't taken your vitamins, right, or your medicine, your cough medicine for like a, a day, yeah, and you forgot, to, or you forgot like two of your doses for the day. You can't take extra doses to catch up. Yeah, exactly, yeah. I find it helpful to see what I've changed in a file over time. I do. Yeah, I I do. I used to do that a lot with um some version. I used to like some version. I was a fan of some version. But the other thing that I do, I've got the compare thing in Notepad plus plus, and I just I use that a lot. Like oh, I'd go. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I, I mean, all in all, these are just tools. So you just find whatever tool works best for the way that you work. I mean, it's really the main thing. So if version control helps you work better, then use it. If it doesn't, then don't use it. That to me, it really comes as simple as that. This is one of my favorite assets. Uh, once again, yeah, the apocalypse yeah. pack, really nice, really beautiful. huge. Uh, exclamation mark Cinti store in chat. Also, oh, and um, we've got a, a Cinti affiliate. Code. Humble? Yeah, exactly. There's an exclamation mark store. humble to get the link to the humble store, uh, which has got massive Cinti bundle pack over on humble bundle. Um, so exclamation mark humble for that. An exclamation mark Cinti store. If you want to pop over to the uh, Cinti store themselves and buy their assets, if you do purchase on the Cinti store, you get five licenses per sale that you per purchase that you do so if you've got a team of oh, five nice. people you can actually give it out so for those five people um and you also get the unreal version as well so oh, that's, that's that's a nice bonus and we just saw a pinky we saw a pinky missing material over there don't we yeah there was that's a i don't know pink. what it is no you think that um i found you bugs uh on your game quick <laughs> right the first ever interview i ever did was with um the Cinti studios so i was with mike and i as i was chatting to him and it was an offline one and i loaded in a a character controller and i was going around and we were look i was looking up seeing all of these holes in his meshes massive mm. gaping holes and one-sided meshes and he said ah i've never looked at it from this perspective before and I was like, what? He goes, yeah, when we're making it, we're always top down. We never go down and look up. So they're never in the position. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why a lot of my videos of reviewing this stuff was finding all of these weird bugs and issues <laughs> uh, with the models because they were, they were never made reviewing. And he goes, after that, they started looking at things from the bottom just to to make sure yeah, exactly <laughs> and i like to point out code monkey you're welcome because now you've got um colliders on everything but they didn't have colliders. they did not have colliders really yep oh. <laughs> and every yeah, single awful. time he was on the stream <laughs> and every single video we've ever i've ever done was and there's no colliders and eventually they're like okay here's the colliders okay. but the funny <laughs> thing is on unreal they have to have colliders but unreal does a lot of that for you and he does the lodding for oh, you yeah. as well uh but now uh they've got it over on on the unity as well so it's brilliant and, and as a point i'm saying that if you buy from the synthesis store you get the unreal versions and you get the original artwork as well you get the original art assets if you want to customize them this is awesome this this building uh, system that you made. Yeah, how, this one is. How far can you extend it? Uh, what do you mean? I mean, it's pretty easy to add more, more parts, more walls, more things. But like, you know, are you are you going to make this into a bigger series of, or is like this is the framework? Let people go off and, and do their own freaky things to it. Yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, this is a nice base. So if anyone wants that's to an awesome expand base. upon this, yeah, you can definitely do that. I am I am actually doing this one now in my in in, in my spare time. Um, I've actually done a video today on the YouTube exclamation mark YouTube of the Survival Template Pro. The Survival Template Pro has its own building system, which is the weakest in the in that whole packet for the Survival Template Pro. It's a great asset, but the building was just a little bit uh, was was letting it down. And he said he's actually going to be refactoring it and redoing his building system. I made uh something like this quite a few years ago and then i realized that the easy build system was basically good enough <laughs> <laughs> right. have you got have you ever sat, found yourself making something and then realizing you know what i'm just going to go to the asset store and just get or go to github <laughs> and get somebody else's not really just because i enjoy building this so <laughs> that's kind of thing for me Building a system like this isn't just because I want the system, it's just because I want to enjoy making that system. <laughs> so yeah, it depends on what is your goal? Is it just to have the system or also to enjoy learning and building the actual system? 
Do you find that you tend to be doing that more now that you're getting more and more focused on the content creation side of your career than if you were focusing on the game development side? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, part of the thing that I love about making videos is that I can essentially tackle a different topic on each video. Whereas when making a game, I'm essentially stuck working on a single game idea for one year, 18 months, something like that. So yeah, like this, I've got a lot more variety. I can I can do all kinds of interesting systems like, like this one, making a house building system. I wouldn't, if I was just making games, I wouldn't have the chance to build something like this. But if I can use that time and justify that time as making an interesting video, then it's really interesting to be able to explore all these different topics. And that comes back to as we were talking about earlier about ROI. So if you're making a game, obviously you need to be in and out as quickly as possible so your game can be in the marketplace. Yeah, exactly. If you're spending six months reinventing the wheel when you could be using somebody else's asset to do that for you, uh, well, exactly. You know, unless you're going to sell it or, or earn money from that particular feature that you're making in itself, it's kind of a, a false economy in some regards. But then the flip side of that is, um, a good, I was watching Callow Creation stream the other day. Could somebody give an exclamation mark shout out to Callow Creations, even though he's not watching, you're not in the in the chat. You can still do it. Um, he made a pathfinding system many years ago. He said. And he's still reusing it to this day. So if you've made something, it doesn't go off. It's not like food that you've put in the cupboard that's now yeah. part of its sell by date. Yeah, on my on my videos, I use a lot of my my utils class. So it's just a just a script with a whole bunch of utility functions and wow, that's functions a very class long... and things that I've built over many years. So yeah. some of these things I first made like ten years ago when I was making my first Steam game. So Lots of things here, some more useful than others. But yeah, over the years, you build up a nice library. How long is that? For example, this one, how to apply a rotation to a vector. This is something that involves math, so it's something that I never know how to do. But nowadays, <laughs> I no longer need to. <laughs> nowadays, I no longer need to uh, mess up my brain trying to remember how to do it. I just go into here, and I know that over here, I've got a bunch of functions. Apply a rotation, create some actions, and so on. <laughs> no, I, I, I love. See, this is why I love you because um, <laughs> I do exactly the same thing. And that's why I made Muck, like Messi's ultimate character, customization, whatever, got, got to change his name. Because it's just a collection of the same scripts I'm always using in all my projects. So I was like, you know what? I'm just going to bundle them. Uh, yeah. So I've got like this globals script or like massive load of statics in my globals um, that I use. But how big is yours? Because you were like 400. If you go right down to the bottom, is it like, is this like a 3000 lined? Yeah, this one has quite a bit. Yeah, fifteen hundred. So yeah. Wow. That, that is, one is just that a is bunch tasty. of bunch of things. Then I got a bunch more on yeah, a bunch more scripts. So one to easily make a UI bar. This one is extremely useful. A function timer. So this is essentially a super easy way to say, okay, I want to trigger a function after some time. So yeah, this one is extremely useful. And again, I'm pretty sure I made this one for my first Steam game for Survivor Squad. So yeah, I first made the initial version of this script 10 years ago, and nowadays I still reuse it constantly. So yeah, growing your own library with the code that you normally use with all the things, that's one of the most useful things. That's that, and that is a perfect, a perfect tip, I think, to, to leave us on. But before we say goodbye, We've got a present to give out, don't we? Yeah, I think so. Uh, did, did you say you, we've got 10,000 copies of uh, of your Tycoon? Oh <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure you want to try to manage 10,000 emails? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're all right. Um, what, what, what are we, what are we going to give? Are we going to give a copy of um, the Battle Royale Tycoon? Sure, whichever game someone wants. Sure, yeah. Or should we do it on some? Should we do it? The whoever wins gets to choose which game they want. Sure, yeah. Because there, it's not just the Battle uh, Royale Tycoon from the absolutely beautiful Code Monkey over on the uh, 
store. It's going to say Unity Asset Store. No, it's on Steam. <laughs> uh, and if you go over, do an exclamation mark code monkey in chat. Um, while he's while he's sitting there playing with his buildings, I show you, you, you as he mentioned, there is an endless loot bundle. Um, I just I paid more than that for the uh, for the for the, for the assets that I for the games that I purchased. I didn't realize it was it was that much of a discount. Oh my word, that's a massive discount on your store. I didn't re I didn't I didn't realize that was oh my word. <laughs> I'm a complete numpty. I should have I should have come here first. <laughs> oh my! I feel I feel like a fool. Right. My wife's gonna don't show my wife this. Whatever you do, <laughs> I mean she will kill me. And she will. Why didn't you go there first instead of going to the Steam store? I want the Squid Game. If you want the Squid Game, go over to his his uh his YouTube and on his Code Monkey website, yeah. and and grab yourself um the course. And make and make yourself your, your squid game. It's very easy to do. You've got you can sit here and grab the project files and, and make yourself this, all these beautiful things that Code Monkey teaches you. So he's got Hyper Knights. Oh, I love the name Hyper Knights. Um, yeah, that's a fun one. I really enjoyed making that one. How long did that one take you to make? Uh, that one was also in early access, so also maybe around 16, 18 months. That was also a big one. Yeah. Is it still in early access? No, <laughs> no it came out in I don't know 2016 maybe. And I love the fact it's got its own website, hyper-nights.com. Yeah, back then that was an important thing. Nowadays, not so much. I was going to ask you, do you feel like it's needed to? Because cause I've got so many domain names that I've purchased from game ideas <laughs> that I was going to make. Uh, you would not believe the number of of unused names that i've just got in a bucket thinking that's how you, that's how you market if you make a, if you buy a domain name suddenly your game your game is going to be known yeah nowadays that strategy is now really how it works now give me an exclamation mark raffle in chat the raffle is now open exclamation mark raffle to be into a chance to win these amazing uh an endless loop studios games from code monkeys ninja tycoon for me is is the one that you know i love the idea of so uh, yeah. um and if you've got a little video here as well it's funny because that one actually started specifically because of an idea the idea with that one was was that game was basically a study on how steam works steam marketing learning all about that the idea was if i make a compelling idea and I don't market it too much, just based on the idea alone, is that good enough to do some marketing? And the answer is sort of yes. Really? So if your game idea is compelling, that alone will really help your marketing. Almighty Games says, I already have Game Corp in my Steam library. Yay, awesome. Oh, that's awesome, thank you. Uh, and in the chat earlier, I was saying um, for, for people going over to your website to pick up your courses, I can't remember who it was. They said that they've got every single one of your courses already. Ah, oh, that's awesome. I hope they liked it. I hope they liked it too. Otherwise, they just keep on buying stuff and they don't like it. And that's just weird. <laughs> it's it's like they keep on eating this from the same restaurant, hoping that one day the restaurant's going to make a good <laughs> meal. I'm pretty sure that's not the case. So Hyper Nights was your favorite then, you're saying, for all of your games? Uh, I mean, I I like parts of them all, but yeah, Hyper Knights is definitely one of my favorites. Yeah, that, you you basically it's my it's pretty much my only action game, and I really enjoyed trying to make something action, trying to make the controls feel good, all the things. Survivor Squad Gauntlets that was also another one that I, I was gonna say, really this, enjoyed this is, making, this is action, but sadly, no, uh, Survivor Squad Gauntlets. No, that one is more strategy because you control. Uh, it's kind of like a mini RTS, yeah. So that one, for example, that one is an example of a game that I really enjoyed making. I was really proud of making it. But sadly, in terms of sales, yeah, that made like pretty much zero. So. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, sadly, the one that I, one of the ones that I like most didn't quite work out. But still, I'm very, very pleased with building the game, yeah. It reminds me of, um, have, you, have you seen C-Sharp Accents YouTube videos? 
Uh, the name is familiar, but I don't know. He's a Greek um, developer uh, and does very long um, tech, um, high tech, uh, advanced YouTube videos. They're great. I love his videos. Um, does a lot of Sinti stuff. He's a lot of Sinti stuff in his thing. He had a, a game on the asset store and basically was saying that it was like makes no sales. Hmm, and yeah. you say that Steam offer you no real support in in selling your game and marketing your game. And oh, goes, yeah. Steam is just a library. So it's up to you to find the audience. That's pretty much it. And he also mentioned that when he got included in the Steam sales, people were just buying it for like no money whatsoever. So he made he yeah. made like hardly anything from the sales because they Steam reduced the price so much. Um and then would people would like would still try to do refunds because they would complete it really quickly or whatever within the within the like the minimum yeah. timeline do you find that um there's enough competition now with people like the epic store and the other stores to to be using those as an alternative to steam or do you still need to go to steam as oh, the main point no really because uh i mean the epic game store is still invite only so yeah, if you if you can't find success on Steam, chances are you won't be accepted onto the Epic Game Store. So that's really that's pretty much it. Yeah. Oh wow. I mean, the Epic Game Store is now how Steam used to be back in the day, which is pretty much you need to know someone who knows someone in order to get you there. If you manage to get on there, then that's awesome because there's much less competition. But chances are, yeah, you don't know someone who can do that. Yeah. That's kind of like if you want to get your game onto the Nintendo, isn't it? Because you can't exactly even, for you, those yeah. putting on consoles. You also need to go through a review process. Whereas on Steam, anyone with a hundred bucks can make a Steam page and try to put something. Oh, or anyone with a thousand bucks can 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 put a load of asset flips on there. <laughs> sure, yeah, of course. There's <laughs> always there's always people who try to game the system, yeah. Uh, there's going to be a lot of variant versions of Chicky Taxi. I can tell you that. I'm going to do <laughs> Ducky Taxi. Um, I'm, I'm going to do Monkey Taxi. There's going to be a Monkey Taxi version of it. There's going to be lots of. Uh, there's, I'm going to. I'm going to asset flip my own. My own game. That's what I'm going to do. All right. Let's. The, the the raffles come to an end. The winner is. Would you like to make the drum roll noise? Uh, I got a microphone. Is that a drum roll? That's a know, good I drum roll. <laughs> you gotta do you gotta do the end at the ksh at the end. Yeah, I don't have any ksh around here. There's nothing metal. I've got a Nope, yeah, I think that just <laughs> makes noise. <laughs> Sorry. Well that it was either that or sing. So the winner is Barak Dub! Uh, You're the winner. Ding. Congratulations. Congratulations, Barak Dub. You've done it. You're a winner. Um, I'd like to apologize to you for breaking your game. <laughs> right. I don't know how you made it, but okay. I mean, I'm proud. Let's 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 <laughs> let's. It's an achievement, you know, in itself. That was I've managed. What do I pick? You can pick any of the amazing games for Code Ranking over on Steam, and uh, I'll tell. Let me know which one you want, and tomorrow we'll hook you up with a key for it. And I would like to say that if you are wanting to make a game, because everyone in this chat, not everyone, most of the people in this chat, 99.7% of people in this chat right now are have made a game or working on making a game or dream that someday they could make a game. And if you want a head start, if you would like a leg up, if you would like to get some help in making your next game, make help your dream come a reality, that all you need to do, all you need, is an exclamation mark code monkey in chat because that's going to take you to the legend that is the unity code market he's he's now why is why is it I just when since i click it it's just disappeared there we go um has it got the wrong it's got the wrong i was doing a great intro and he went to the wrong page he went to survivor squad let me do that again all you need is a unity code monkey .com website because then you can go to his courses and either do an awesome builder defender game which is very much like the squid game game let's be honest because because you know it's just that's what it is it's strategy building yeah you can make games without code if you don't like code if you've got an allergy to coding 
don't worry. Uh, design patterns. These are these are ones that you're recommending from the game dev TV courses. Yeah, those are some really interesting ones. Yeah. And Blender, because if you're not going to buy assets, if you haven't got the money to buy assets, learn to make it yourself. You can make your own artwork if you're good at because Blender's free. Yeah, I started I started learning Blender with that course and actually learned quite a bit in a pretty short amount of time. So if you want to learn the basics, definitely doable. And another awesome Unity uh, channel over on YouTube that grew very quickly, very fast, because his content is so amazing, is Jason Wayman over yeah. on the Unity College. Mate, thank you so much for coming in. Let me let me go back to your beautiful face. There you are. There's your, that, there, there it is. Look at look at that. How can you how can you not <laughs> learn when you're looking at someone so fantastic as the is the co <laughs> Mr. Code Monkey? Keep calling me, Mr. Code Monkey. Please can you <laughs> teach me <laughs> as the Mr. Code Monkey himself. Um, mate, have you enjoyed yourself? Sure, yeah, this was this was fun. It was interesting. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Sure. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Do you feel more more relaxed now in these bizarre uh <laughs> on the spot in uh occasions like these? Sure, I'm improving. Every time I make a live stream, I get a bit better. So, yeah, coming here was nice little training for me and I hope it was <laughs> interesting for the people watching. <laughs> well, mate, I tell you what, the the advice and the tips that you've given is like going to college it is like we just yeah. had a lecture from our favorite tutor uh, at university so thank you so much everyone in chat um already are massive fans and they love your work because like we, like people have saying you've you're helping them get through their studies by teaching them the things that they otherwise wouldn't have found um unlike when you started and when i started back you know using unity 4 you i actually remember unity 1 um <laughs> so back when well, we're trying to find alternatives <laughs> to talk and things like that um yeah we couldn't find content to learn online but people don't have that problem anymore because they've got you yeah thank you i'm glad i'm glad people like the videos and as long as people want to keep learning i'll keep making them <laughs> that's all that's all we can ask now G jt lewis i'm currently about seven months into working on my first serious project I am really hoping to release later this year. Code Monkey's tutorials have helped me a lot with various mechanics. That's awesome. I'm glad they've helped. And best of luck with your project. Yeah, seven months. That's pretty serious. So I hope it goes well. And to be seven, I'm releasing later this year. That's epic. Yeah. Don't forget to come in the Discord, exclamation mark Discord, and post some screenshots in the showcase of what you're working on. Uh, mate, I would like to say, Code Monkey, that um hopefully being on this stream has taught you what not to do on your live stream okay so you're not <laughs> going to pick up any bad habits if anyone hasn't seen the code monkeys live streams yet they are fantastic they're over on youtube obviously because that's the place to be um exclamation mark code monkey chat he's got a link to his youtube go over there click on that big juicy red subscribe button follow and click on the magic bell so next time he is alive you will get a notification so you can watch his live streams and he does have his camera on on his live stream now in the little bottom mm. corner however be careful because every now and again the magic curtain might fall down and you can see the <laughs> <on> behind it. <laughs> yeah that wasn't <laughs> uh, i gotta get a more a more fixed setup yeah because the whole thing being set up based on tape yeah the whole green screen <laughs> not very not very stable now especially when the dog comes crashing through <laughs> <laughs> all right buddy i will catch you later you gotta get some sleep all right yeah it's definitely late <laughs> all right so thanks again for watching me thank you all all right if you want to see more of my crazy videos click on the left side of your screen now and down below there's that big juicy subscribe button and right next to it is the magic bell that if you click it it will tell you if i've got a new video coming out till next time <laughs>